On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we have renewal news and when we can expect new series seasons to premiere, but primarily we are talking about Picard 307 Dominion, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you can listen on two lifelong friends do what they always do, chat about Star Trek. My name is Matthew Carroll. And I'm David C. Robertson. What is up, buddy? Oh, nothing much. I am super sleepy. Yeah, man. It's a 2 a.m. watch times, you know? Mm-hmm. You're killing me. You're killing me. <laughs> but if we hadn't done it now, we couldn't have done it for like till Sunday or something. So I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. you, you fought through the pain. The pain, and you are the master of pain, and whatever else Vatic said. Mm. Oh, I know pain. I know the river. I know the sea. I don't know. <laughs> that was rough. But <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me hit these announcements real quick. We did find out uh, they did, they announced Strange New Worlds will return. Season 2 will debut on Thursday, June 15th. In okay. the U.S., U.K., Australia, Latin America, Brazil, France, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, and in South Korea at a later date to be announced. And um, the rest of the 10-episode season will roll out each following Thursday. And it has been renewed for a 10-episode third season. Nice. So season 4 of Lower Decks is coming late summer, they say, uh, on Paramount Plus in the U.S., with an exact date, a bit, a date to be announced. And uh, they have also announced that it has been renewed for a 10-episode fifth season. Wow. I can't believe we're already at season five for that. I know. Or getting there. That's wild. And Star Trek Prodigy is returning this winter with season two, which will be 20 episodes. Season 18. Got it. And that'll, <laughs> that'll cover us through uh, 2024 and Discovery... 2024, as we already knew. So, so, yeah. Is there anything coming up after Picard, or are we going to have a break between Picard and June? It looks like we have a break between Picard and June. Oh, man. That's a bummer. Uh, mm. No Trek. No Trek on the air. No Trek on the air. Boo. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's not great news, but it's exciting that all these things are getting renewed and lots of new content coming. Um, sweet. Well, let's talk about this episode. It's late, and I stayed up to do this. Let's do it. Yeah, man. Let's do it. So, Vatic, man, right? Vatic? Jack? Uh, yeah. I Data? don't know. Lore? Stop just saying names. <laughs> That's all I got, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired for analysis. I'm just going to yell <laughs> names for 45 minutes. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> Shorty! <laughs> I try to be relatively yes and, but you break me of it every week. Please no. Please no. <laughs> There's a lot you can glean from my tone of voice. <laughs> no. <laughs> a lot of, anal- a lot of <laughs> fine analysis weaving in the fine fibers of these here vocal cords. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's a little bit of a, uh, I almost want to say bottle episode, because we don't leave the ship much. Right. Uh, it's very much like an insular, you know. It, 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 I feel this one was the first episode that felt a little like there'd been massive changes in the editing. There were a bunch of lines that like were were like read off screen, like while people turned away. There were like lines that like were clearly added in post and stuff. And there was also mm. like just some weird, like they didn't discuss the plan at all. And I know that like that was kind of the point, the plan to unfurl, but it wasn't like an interesting enough plan. <laughs> like to, it was just like, also they, they, there was another ship there. I don't know. It was like a whole thing. Like they, 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 they say like Picard tells Crusher, or, you know, Jack that, Hey, uh, maybe we have the upper hand after all. Like basically we're going to lay a trap is what he's saying. Yeah. And yeah, they yeah. do, but they explain nothing about that trap. It's like suddenly the ships are derelict and there's another ship there, but they never, do, do we have any explanation of what that other ship is? I don't remember one. No, they just jumped to it. And I was like, they didn't have any other ships they could trust. The one ship they we saw, which was great to see, we saw uh, a f- uh, fake Tuvok. <laughs> I was sad that he was fake Tuvok. 
I was sad too, but it was still really good to see, uh, you know, that actor. Tim Russ. Yeah. Yeah. It goes great. And like, it kind of sets some stakes to this whole thing because, I mean, if nothing else, we know Tuvok is captured and being tortured probably by the changelings. Yeah. Um, that's, and apparently a lot of other Starfleet officers are being kept alive so they can be mined for information. Like, that's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vatic and the other changelings' backstories are pretty rough, honestly. Yeah. Did you catch the little? Well, I, I'm I'm gonna call it an Easter egg. I don't know. I feel like they're I feel like they're trolling you specifically. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah, how, you, how do you figure? We've been talking about like you know what's going on here. Is it something with eight four seven two? Like we've been talking a lot uh-huh. about eight four seven two, and they were like, they were injected with thelonium eight four seven. Oh. And I was like, it just that that's a three 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 of the four digits. I was like, three yeah. of the four digits in the right order. It felt like a it didn't feel like it was a reference to it because it gets it's it's a it's an element or whatever. Like I don't mm-hmm. think it has anything to do with eight four seven two, but it felt like it had to be like a little like I don't know. I don't know like I felt like they were trolling you, and that's impossible because this show was made before you had that theory. But like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they might be, they might be, but I will point out, Jack is telepathic. Oh, yeah. Jack is very telepathic. And I will point out, to talk about my theory last week, uh, they talked about how the Uromotic Syndrome was a something else is in their brain, and that was a misdiagnosis, which it's always been a possible thing that it could develop into or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. But sounds like the Uromotic Syndrome is something with there is what they're looking for if if i like that's what it seems like pretty solidly to me maybe that's just because it was my theory last week and it seems to be laying out that way but yep sounds like we cracked it man me yep. and you did it together <laughs> we're gonna change the name of the show to just two gumshoes <laughs> starship gumshoe that's us um i like it just as like long it. as we don't change the g to a c we're gonna be okay Oh man, was that, was that? Never mind. It's 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 too it's too, it's too deep, and I don't know if like it. it there's some uh, you know there's some there's some like '90s TV show. Uh, please, uh, this one's if you have if you're listening with your kids, you may want to turn the turn the channel. Some '90s TV show or something where like turn the channel, the, you old bastard. There's like someone is busted uh, masturbating, and okay. uh, and like one of the kids like in the family or something is reading like apparently he's masturbating into a shoe if I remember oh. correctly yeah and the, but it's like a someone of the cloth I believe like a priest oh what yeah it's weird okay. it's weird I don't know the story is weird but uh, then he says um uh the, the, they someone quotes that line the uh, priest it, is masturbating into apparently the shoe? apparently okay and so okay. someone quotes that bible verse like don't let your seeds spill on the ground or something like that uh-huh <laughs> and uh one of the children in the family i don't know what show this was but I, for some reason i always rem- i always remembered this line the kid says i figured that's why I wo- why he was using the shoe <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know what that's from at all, <laughs> but like uh-huh. that, that that stuck with me for like since I was a kid. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, know so is. so when you when you made the reference to come shoe a moment ago, that's where my mind uh-huh. went. <laughs> I just I just you know was thinking you don't you don't want to step you got you got to wear shoes so you don't want to step in it right you right get in between your toes. You, I mean, when do you really wash between your toes? Every day. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> back to Vatic. <laughs> Don't project your shit onto <laughs> me, man. <laughs> so, what do you think? What did you think of this episode? <laughs> I thought it was kind of boring, honestly. Like, mm. it was good. It was good. Like, it was just one of those, like, necessary episodes that I didn't really want to have to have. Yeah. Where it was, like, just, like, we've got to move the story along, and 
kind of get behind the scenes a little bit. Also, though, it, you know, I was bored a little bit, but I wanted more. I was, like, bummed out when it was over. This episode revealed a few interesting things. The fact that Jack not only can hear thoughts, which is new information, but he can also control people's minds when he needs to. Uh, can that, he? Huh? Can he? Was that, was that, I just thought he was talking to people. Um, I don't know, man. The way, because he wasn't just, like, saying roll. He was, like, moving with her the way he wanted her to move. You know, yeah, sure, he's communicating with her. But, like, I got the sense that he was controlling her. He was, Uh he was puppeting her. Which is why. I didn't quite get that, no. Well, I I definitely think it was. Because when. Maybe. uh, When she uh, says, was that you in my head? Uh And then uh, she aims a gun at him. Because she was feeling out of control she was feeling um uh, like some like an invader was invading her brain you know she didn't just feel like they were talking you know i don't know i didn't see her aim that gun but maybe i just missed oh that. she definitely aimed the gun oh man she she aimed okay. it and like cocked it does the little noise and everything oh uh, maybe she did i don't remember um she was very uncomfortable <laughs> with what he was doing in her brain and he's saying yeah. the words but he's also doing the motions with her as if he's like somehow controlling her body and moving it how she how he wants her to move i mean i'll take your word for it (laughs) i don't know that's how i read the scene um so (laughs) so that's so that's a that's a new ability we know jack has um i'm nervous that jack is not picard's son at all um Uh because you know where they they talk about uh he's going where he truly belongs right uh, I forget the last word she says. Something about taking him away. Um, I didn't think there was a last word. She just said, where you truly belong. Oh, is that, the, that that may be the last word. There's another line earlier that I'm thinking of then that yeah. was similar. Um, show you who you truly are. Is oh, yeah, line? there was that. Yeah, that was, that was the line I was thinking of. Um, so, yeah. Uh, who is Jack, man? Who is Jack? I don't know. I mean, I have my thoughts, but who? Who? What are your thoughts? Apparently, well, eight four seven two, man. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think it's it's possible eight four seven two is involved. I agree. I suspect there's not um, a satisfactory answer. Oh, really? Yeah, like I, I suspect this is going to be one of those mystery box reveals, long stretching that doesn't satisfy anyone. Hmm. Like I don't think it'll be anyone we know or anything. Okay, I don't think that because it seems like they've they've released a lot of like questions this season, and all of them seem to be related and seem to have answers. Uh-huh. Um, so I think they're I think they're aiming at something. I don't think they're mystery boxing us. Well, Terry Metallus seems very on board with the um, Jack Sydney. Mm-hmm. Shipping, so I'm. Yeah. I suspect he will be Picard's son, but he's been genetically altered or something. Right. I still think he's their son. I'm wondering if some experience Picard had in his life gave him. Like, and I'm trying to th- like. You may have some idea. Like, I'm wondering, has he ever had an experience with like some great being or powerful being that might have like imprinted in his brain or something, like some sort of thing that would might have had this power lay dormant in his physiology until he gave he had a son just every third episode you know right exactly <laughs> so so i'm wondering if uh there's something like that that they're going to bring back and say like yeah you know picard that eremotic syndrome was actually you know a result of your brain encountering whatever uh it was a sect of the it was a sect of the calamarine the brain fugglers <laughs> <laughs> right right uh, it could have been like you know something with Q or something with whoever uh, mm-hmm. giving him some sort of um, you know brain powers that he never unlocked, but then his son went on to do so. A final gift from Q, <laughs> but it would have been a long time ago. So I don't know about that. The about final. All right, all right, Dave. Dave, um, you are tired. You're not even talking. You're just doing a lizard tongue at me on Zoom. <laughs> I got a little distracted by it. It's all good, um, man. It's all good. Yeah. You know, I'm still very excited. This episode does feel a little, like I said, 
just sort of bottle episode, sort of a, uh, you know, let's like get all the, get, get a little bit more information. Uh, the one major moment that I really, really enjoyed was Jordy talking to data. Yes. About how it broke him. Yeah. Not only that it broke him, but he also healed him. That was a really yeah. beautiful, like the memories of you, you taught me how to be a better man, a better father, a better friend, all those things that like, and all those lessons I learned from our friendship are what walked me through the dark time of losing you. Like that was beautiful writing right there. That's some good stuff. That's somebody who's been through that stuff, you know? Yeah. And who really wanted to say that, you know, that's really good. I think that scene really fixed any issues I had with not having Jordy there in season one when Data died. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we got a little mention of, uh, you know, sad Data in this episode from Picard. Is <laughs> like I said goodbye to him and I told him, uh, he asked me to let him die and I did and now he wants my help to talk about his death and Jordy's like, yeah, I, I can't handle losing him again either. Mm-hmm. And neither can we. Yeah, for real. Damn you, Terry Metallus. Make sure it doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm really curious how they're going to handle lore and whether this will be an ongoing thing or whether we're going to get just, you know, oh, Data beat him. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Yeah. I feel like I'd rather... I feel like they wrapped up the whole, like, Lol and Soong's personalities are inside of him as just like a memory they didn't even mention lol <laughs> they said uh b4 and soong's memories are just oh, engrams yeah. they didn't even mention lol so it's like but, but in in the in the defense of that as far as i know lol was only memory engrams inside of data to begin with yeah so she had already been integrated into data so yeah, I don't know. It was just weird that they mentioned Law last episode and they completely ignored that this episode. Maybe they just like kept it because they knew Star Trek fans were going to be like, wait, but Law's personality was also on... You know. Yeah. From Maybe. that episode, The Offspring. Okay, yeah. shut up. We know. Um, yeah, whatever. Like, I think it's like, I thought it was going to be like... Because he was actually like shifting into soon and before... In the previous episode, and now it's like, eh, okay, well, they're just memories now, so. Yeah, that's weird. They definitely, weird. I didn't remember soon, but there was definitely a distinct B4 in there. Yeah, no, there was a distinct B4, and then there was a point where he goes, I'm soon. And then weird. that was gone. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird, but. That was weird. I, I guess we'll see, but I, I could I could see it actually being interesting to have, like, sort of the, the devil on your shoulder. Yeah. You know, constantly. Yeah. And like learning to integrate that as a human would, like your dark side with your light. Right. Absolutely. And not only that, but seeing the dark side and, and like if lore stays a distinct personality, seeing lore find reason to like, like I, I want the spike treatment for lore, right? Like the, from mm -hmm. Buffy, uh, I want the like, he's a bad guy. He never really stops being himself, but he like. Like for for whatever reason, he needs to work with them because it's like let's say that they get a season where you know they're out there and just like the only way the body survives is if he helps Data, you know, like and then right. eventually he like likes being part of a family, likes being part of a team, likes being trusted, and then you start seeing that transformation, you know. Yeah, we get to see him push Doctor Crusher in the water on the holodeck because he knows it won't be funny to her. <laughs> <laughs> indeed indeed and that's the extent of his mischievousness yeah oh you rascal Ras rascally wabbit rascally lore but yeah this episode uh uh the big biggest stuff is probably the geordie stuff and the vatic stuff which the vatic uh backstory was was good and interesting and you know it's more like throw it on the pile of the sins of starfleet <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Not only did the disease that caused the founders trouble, but they did this uh, experimentation on them as well. Well, now that you've seen that scene I was talking about, where the uh, the face talks to Vatic, 
do you still think that he's just talking about her kind as being genetically altered, or do you think he's that creature's not a changeling? I don't know, but this episode we did learn that her kind is an offshoot of the changelings, like I was talking mm-hmm. about. So it could be a changeling. So she basically found out that these like she can turn other changelings into like kamikaze changelings. That's what she can do. That's her power. She's the first. And they said that she can commune with others, but in doing so, it hastens their death, but they gain the mm-hmm. ability to fight, uh, you know, fight their, their enemy Starfleet. And they're in terrible pain constantly. Yeah. Like it's a, it's, it's, that's a dark bargain right there. Um, and you really have to have some massive hatred of Starfleet to do that. And apparently there's enough of them that have. Um, and, and so, I don't know. I find it, uh, I find that pretty fascinating. Um, but I could absolutely see there's other changelings who haven't taken that bargain. And they think of these guys as different, you know, different types. And now it makes sense why a couple episodes ago, uh, he said, you're the only one that's important. Cause she's the one that can recreate this, uh, Effect in others, yeah. um. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It could be someone else, but it, it it seems to line up with it just being a changeling to me. But uh, it could be someone else. Could be eight four seven two. Could be any enemy of Starfleet at this point. Um, it's totally in Sar and his <laughs> essence interacting with the goo from the Nexus. That's right. He met a changeling in the Nexus. He communed with it. There's a lot of time there. You gotta commune with they what you can. They say goo is the fire in which we burn. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, uh, I don't have a ton to say uh, at this late hour tonight. Uh, me and you both uh-huh. had early days today and, and stayed we up did. to do this. But we're going to be doing a feedback episode again this week. And so we'll have plenty of time to get our thoughts together and do more on this episode. So uh, send in your feedback, uh, Star Trek Ucast at gmail.com. We'll collate that up and bring it to you guys and uh, respond to it on the show here this week. Um, you got anything else, Dave? Um, no, nah, man, I don't have anything else for now. I was bummed out that we didn't see Riker or Troy. Mm, yeah. yeah, I was bummed out. We didn't see Worf or Rafi. I think I, I just I want to see people together. Yeah. It's for a, the small amount of time that we have. Who was it that wrote in last week and said, don't split the party? Damn it, Riker. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, I kind of feel like... Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this, and we haven't mentioned it on the show, and I was really excited. I saw someone mention this on Twitter, and I, I had to go back and confirm. I looked at a scene from All Good Things, the last TNG episode, mm-hmm. when Jordy shows up on the, at the vineyard. There is a scene where Picard says, how are the little ones... Uh, Brett, Alondra, and and Jordy goes Sydney. Uh, so Alondra and Sydney were totally his kids in all good things. That's great. That's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. Um, other things have changed. Worf and other things have changed. Worf and Riker don't hate each other as much. Well, you know. I mean, Riker doesn't hate Worf. We'll see about. It. Uh, how much war? Well, Deanna didn't die, so yeah, that's true. Unless that's what this is. Just kidding. This is way past that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we'll be back uh, soon. <laughs> later this week, uh, heads up with that. Uh, the sweet, sweet. Um, you know, uh, feedbacks. Oh, by the way, I got a brand new podcast. If you if you listen to this and you want to follow along, we got a brand new podcast here at Stranded Panic called multiverse news and uh we're gonna be doing well, like that's who's been following me yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> you've been seeing that seeing that <laughs> pop up on all the socials i was like who the hell is this spammer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah we got a new uh new show called multiverse news where we're doing like a like a news roundup every week of like all geeky news not just one universe so uh come join us over there F- follow it on uh, spotify apple google all the places multiverse news um, and uh, we'll be back soon. Joel on true. Live long and prosper. 
Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 